Welcome back, my dear students, in our course in the organizational behavior. We will start today chapter 2 about diversity in organizations. We will divide this chapter for part 1 and part 2. Diversity in organization is a chapter in our OP course. The learning objectives of this chapter and after studying this chapter you should be able to describe the two major forms of workforce diversity, recognize the types and understand how they function in organizational settings, identify the key biographical characteristics and describe how they are relevant to uh, OP, define the intellectual ability and demonstrate its relevance to OP, Contr contrast the intellectual and physical ability and describing how organizations manage diversity effectively. In the first part of this chapter, we will discuss and the demographic characteristics of the workforce, like the U.S. workforce, uh, as uh, we show here in our slide, the U.S. workforce beca become diversity today. In order to adapt the shift, organizations need to make diversity management a central component of their policies and practices. In the past, OP text books note that the, rapid that the rapid change was about to occur as the male managerial workforce gave way to gender balanced and the multi-ethnic workforce today Today that change is no longer happening, it has happened and is increasing reflected in the makeup of managerial and professional jobs. In addition, over the last years the earning gap between whites and other racial and ethnic groups in the USA has decreased significantly past differences between whites and Asian have disappeared or been reversed workers over the age of 55 are an increasingly large portion of the workforce as well. This permanent shift toward a diverse workforce means organizations need to make diversity management a central component of their policies and practices at the same time however differences in which across gender and racial and ethnic groups and executive positions in corporations continue to be held by white mix in number far beyond their representation in the workforce in general then in, in this chapter we will discuss the two levels of the derv of the diversity in the diversity we have two levels the first level is the service level diversity that included the gender race age and the physical ability and the most important level is the deep level diversity that include values attitudes and the beliefs of the workforce employees in this two levels of the of diversity 
Although much has been said about diversity in age, race, gender, ethnicity, religion, and disability states, experts now recognize that these demographic characteristics are just the tip of demographics mostly reflect the service level diversity, not thoughts and findings, and can lead employees to perceive one another through uh, types and assumptions. However, evidence has shown that as people get to know one another, they become less concerned about the demographic differences if they see themselves as sharing more important characteristics such as the personality and values that represent the deep level diversity. To understand these differences between the service level and the deep level diversity, we can say that the service level diversity is the difference in easily perceived characteristics and it can lead employee to perceive one another through stereotype and assumption such as race, age, gender and in the second level is the deep level diversity is more important for determining similarity as people get to know one another such as values, personality, and work preferences. In this chapter, the concept of diversity will lead us to another concept. Uh, this concept is the discrimination. The discrimination, although diversity does present many opportunities for organizations, effective diversity management also means working to eliminate unfair discrimination. To discriminate is to note a difference between things which is itself isn't necessary bad. Not seeing one employee is more qualified is necessary for making hiring decision and another is sticking to leadership responsibilities uh, exceptionally well is necessary for making promotion decisions. Usually when we talk about discrimination, so we mean allowing our behavior to be influenced by these types about groups of people rather than looking at individual characteristics. Unfair discriminations assumes everyone in a group is the same. This discrimination is often very harmful to the organizations and the employee and we will define the discrimination as we discuss here in our slide. We can define the discrimination as it means we allowing our behavior to be influenced by stereotypes about groups of people and we have here uh, an important concept is that unfair discrimination is often very harmful to organization and employee such as reduced productivity negative conflicts and increase the turnover all these uh, are expressed as a negative behavior in our organization and the discrimination type included uh, that discriminatory policies or practices the sexual harassment and the intimidation intimidation and the mockery and insults, exclusion and incivility. This table shows the different types of the discrimination and the definition of every type of 
these types of discrimination and the examples from the organization. The first type is that the discriminatory policies and practices uh, are actions taken by representatives of the organization that deny equal opportunity to perform or unequal rewards for performance, but the sexual harassment is unwanted sexual advance and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature that create a hostile or often offensive offensive work environment and the intimidation uh, behavior overt threats or blowing directed at members of specific groups of employees and the mockery and insults are jokes or negative stereotypes sometimes uh, sometimes the result of jokes taken too far and the exclusion of certain people from job opportunities social events discussions or informal mentoring can occur unintentionally and the incivility uh, this treatment including behavior in an aggressive manner interrupting the person or, or ignoring his or her opinion all these types of discrimination are a negative behavior we can control this behaviors by the diversity management staff. Then we will discuss the biographical characteristics in the workforce. The biographical characteristics means the personal characteristics that are objective and easily obtained from personal records. Uh, like the service level diversity, such as age, gender, race, and length of tenure. In chapter one, in the biographical characteristics is essentially essentially concerned with finding and analyzing the variables that affect employee productivity, absence, turnover, deviance, citizenship, and satisfaction. Many organizational concepts, motivation, say, or power, and policies or organizational cultures are hard to assess. Let's begin then by looking at factors that are easily definable and readily available data that can be obtained for the most part from an employee's human resource file. Variations in these surface level characteristics may be the base for discrimination against classes or employees, so it's worth knowing how closely related they actually are to important work outcomes. Many are not uh, as important as people believe and far more variation occurs within groups sharing biographical characteristics than between them. The first type of our biographical characteristics age the relationship between age and the job performance in our textbook is likely to be an issue of increasing importance during the next de decade for at least three reasons. First, believe is wide, widespread that job performance declines with increasing the age regardless of whether this is true. A lot of people believe it and act on it. Second, 
as noted in this chapter uh, uh, and in chapter one the workforce is again is aging many employees recognize that older workers represent a huge potential pool of high quality applications companies such as borders and the uh, vanguard groups have sought to increase their attractiveness to older workers by providing targeted training that means their need and by offering flexible work schedules and part-time work to draw in those who are semi-retired. The third reason is the legislation that for all interns and purposes retirement most the U.S. workforce today no longer have to um, after at age 70 and the older here we can discuss this question does age and job performance have a relationship an employee is older who is less likely to quiet older employee have lower rate of avoidance of avoidable absence than do younger employees but they have higher rates of unavoidable absence. And we have uh, uh, the next question here. Does age and job satisfaction have relationship? The answer is satisfaction tended to continually increase among professionals as they age. However, satisfaction tended to decrease among non-professional during middle age and then rises again in the later years. Then uh, we can uh, finding here from these two questions that there are a positive relationship between the age and the job performance and another positive relationship between the age and the job satisfaction. The second type of the biographical characteristics here is the age is the gender whether women perform as well on jobs as men do or there are a relationship between performing women's or performing the men's in jobs there are few differences between men and women in job performance uh, like work uh, schedules seem to differ between genders uh, one study point out women more liking to turn out than men but now maybe this results is different parents were rated lower in job commitment achievement driving dependability than individuals without children's Then we will discuss the third type of the biographical characteristics are the race and ethnicity. What we mean with the race and ethnicity? Race is a controlled issue in many cases, even bringing up the topic of race and uh, ethnicity is enough to create uncomfortable silence indeed evidence suggests that some people find uh, interacting with other racial groups uncomfortable suggests that some people find interacting with other racial groups able 
unless they are clear behavior scripts to guide their behavior most people in the united states identify themselves accordingly to the racial group the uh, this groups and ethnicity distinction is also made between native english speaker and the hispanic like uh, this is an example we can see race and ethnicity have been studied as they relate to employment outcomes such as hiring decisions performance evaluation pay and workplace discrimination most research have concerned on differences in outcomes and attitudes between whites and african americans with little study of issues relevant to uh, asians then we can here differentiate between the race and ethnicity concepts uh, we can define the race as means biographical heritage people but the ethnicity is additional set of cultural characteristics that often overlap with race like the people tend to favor colleges of their own race and the substantial racial differences exist in attitudes toward affirmative actions and the african americans generally fear worse than the whites in employment decisions and we can say that the employ uh, employers major concern about using the mental ability tests for selection promotion training concern about using the employment decision is that they have a negative impact on racial and ethnic groups however evidence suggested that the despite group differences in mean test performance there is little convincing evidence that will construct the test are more predicted of educational training or occupational performance for members of the majority groups that then for members of minority groups observed differences in IQ tests scored by racial or ethnic groups are smaller in more recent samples the issue of racial different differences in general mental ability test is continuous to be debated then we the disability in the diversity biographical characteristics in the disability workers with disabilities receive higher performance evaluation but they also encounter lower performance expectations and are less likely to be hired in the disability with the passage of the americans with disabilities uh, the representation the representations of individuals with disabilities in the workforce rapidly increased according to the employees are required to make reasonable accommodation of their workforce will be accessible to individual with the physical or mental disabilities So here in our um, biographical characteristics, we discuss the age, gender, race, and ethnicity, and the disability features, uh, and discuss other biographical characteristics here, like the tenure, religion, 
and the sexual orientation and the gender identity in the tenure uh, except for gender and racial differences few issues are more subject to misconsumption and then the impact of seniority of the job performance extensive reviews have been concerned of the seniority productivity relationship if we define the seniority as time on particular job the most recent evidence demonstrates a positive relationship between seniority and the job productivity so tenure expressed as work experience appears to be a good predictor of the employee productivity uh, then we can define the tenure that it means seniority as time on a particular job uh, in the in a particular job and the tenure is a good predictor of the employee productivity and also the tenure one of an employee's previous job of is a powerful predictor of that employee future turnover the tenure is also a potent variable in explaining turnover the longer a person is in a job the less likely he or she is to quit moreover consistent with the research suggesting past behavior is the best predictor of the future behavior evidence indicator tenure at an employee's previous job is a powerful predictor of that employee future turnover and then we have the uh, religion as one of the biographical characteristics not only do religious and non-religious people question each other belief systems often people of different religious faith conflict as the what well, doesn't mean religious in the uh, signs of the op then we have the sexual the final type of the biographical characteristics the sexual orientation and the gender identity employees will differ widely in their uh, treatment of sexual orientation uh, as we discuss uh, in the gender uh, or the employee is uh, male or female so uh, we discuss these types of the and we will complete the second part of this chapter in the next lecture and we will begin with the ability and the definition of the ability and the two types of the ability is are the intellectual ability and the physical ability good luck my dear students and goodbye